Now it's time to look ahead to the weekend's hurling and what a packed weekend of hurling it is in the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship because we've two provincial deciders to be decided between Saturday and Sunday as well as a couple of win-or-go-home All-Ireland Round 1 qualifiers on Saturday afternoon. The first of those, Clare against Wexford at Semple Stadium at half past one. Then Leash take on Waterford at UPMC Nolan Park for a two o'clock throw-in. Later on that evening, it's the Leinster Senior Hurling Final. Dublin looking to win the title for the first time since 2013. They take on Kilkenny at Croke Park, the defending champions. That gets underway at half past seven. And then on Sunday, it is All-Ireland and defending Munster champions Limerick up against Tipperary at Porky Cueve. That game gets underway at 4.15pm. Looking ahead to all of this, we have former Galway All-Star Ashling Connolly with us. Ashling, thanks a million for joining us this afternoon. Great to be here, Neil. How are you? I'm good now. I'm very well. Um, I might start with the Munster final, Limerick and Tipperary, just because I know you're based in Limerick. And I was at home last week in Limerick as well and uh, just chatting to a few people. I have to say, it's it just all still feels a bit strange that how how quickly things have changed because as I was home, I've never seen so many Limerick people picking holes in an eight-point Munster semi-final win against Cork. Yeah, and I think, you know, Limerick bet Cork comfortably, you could say. You know, they started off um, not as strong as they normally do with Cork going on the attack. And, you know, by the first water break, Limerick were, were actually down um, one, three to, to, to four points. And um, so it was uncharacteristic of Limerick, um, you know, that you could say for the first 25 minutes, Cork seemed to be on top. But then um, just before half time, two brilliant goals um, from Limerick, Kyle Hayes, an amazing goal, and um, brought them on top then for half time. But in saying that, like they they had 20 wides throughout the game. Um, they weren't up to the standards that they have been over the last couple of years. So I'm sure over the you know the last you know two weeks they would have been working on that, especially their shooting practice, a training to try and get that um, rectified because they can't have 20 wides against Tipperary if they want to go um, back to back and win three in a row monster titles this weekend. No, certainly not. And like, what is the general feeling down around there uh, among hurling fans? Do they think that these are issues that are likely to be ironed out? this weekend and you know over the course of the rest of the campaign as well or does it feel like these are actual issues that they started quite slowly against Cork could have been five points down after 25 minutes had it not been for for Nicky Quaid saving the penalty and you know it's it's not every day you're going to score two goals right in the stroke of half time that's going to completely swing a match yeah the general feeling is that Limerick are favourites but we're going to like that Limerick are going to have to put up um, a really strong performance to beat this, you know, tip team. Sheedy is going to want to get, you know, one up on this Limerick team. They've lost the last couple of times. They have, uh, you know, played together or against one another. Um, also, I'm sure, you know, the elephant in the room on the tip team is that everyone is saying, oh, this team is aging. You know, the likes of the Mahers, um, Shane Lee Cannon, you know, they've, they have a lot of mileage on the clock. So I'm sure that's going to be used as an incentive to um, drive on uh, tip. In addition to what happened in, against Clare for tip where um, Aidan McCarthy was sin binned and, you know, it was deemed that Tipperary were, you know, got a lucky break. Um, so all of these things, those three things, I think Shidi will use as ammunition to drive them on. But, you know, just to your original question, um, if Limerick are firing on all cylinders, they'll be hard to stop is the general feeling down here in Limerick. Yeah, I, w- I was reading in the uh, Irish Examiner this week, the, the author of it escapes me now, but making the point that when it comes to Limerick's wides, they had 20 uh, last time out against Cork at Semple Stadium. That in general if you look back over the course of the last couple of seasons they are averaging in and around the like the 15 wides which is relatively high but that they seem to be quite happy to to have that number and they seem to be happy to shoot on sight because there seems to be a theory that if they are hitting the ball wide and they're putting it out of play that it's stopping the opposition from setting up any counter attacks you know rather than putting hopeful balls into a full forward line that gets turned over and you might find yourself in a bit of trouble that if it does go wide they're able to reset themselves and and get themselves set up for the next uh, for the next puck out. Yeah, and what everyone says about this Limerick team is how composed they are, how confident they are on the ball, how they don't waste possession. So you know they're not going to you know they 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 won't waste the ball. Uh, 
you know, easily. Um, and they'll they'll take their shots from, you know, way out. Um, and they're always, like you mentioned there, that they have a slow start. I don't think that's a major concern or they had a slow start against Tip because they're so composed that even if they have a rocky 20 minutes, it's not like their heads drop. You know, Caroline Courage, their psychologist, has done amazing work with them. And all the players, if you listen to them on interviews, they nearly always mention her, which is quite phenomenal, like, because you don't really hear the psychologists getting uh, shout outs that often. But, she, you know, when they won, um, you know, the All-Ireland, she was mentioned, um, you know, last year and, and, and three years ago. So, you know, I don't think they're go- if they have a slow start like they did against Tip, that it's it, it's not going to impact them too much. They'll keep ticking the ball over. They'll keep getting scores and um, playing the ball um, and winning possession, as you said. Um, and also that, you know, they're going to, this is the first year that, the Munster Cup has a name on it. It's the McMackey Cup. Um, and that's going to be a little bit of an extra incentive for Limerick to bring the McMackey back um, to Limerick for the first time ever in the history. So um, it's going to be a nail-biting stuff. You know, Tip are going to throw the kitchen sink at it as are Limerick. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's hard to see Limerick being bet um, just because how on form they are at the moment. Yeah, and it is interesting you mentioned how how often and how deliberate it almost seems that like Caroline Curry gets gets mentioned by the players in uh, post match interviews after they've won Munster titles and All Ireland titles. Like it does actually seem quite deliberate that they want to make a point of saying of of highlighting the impact she's had on them. And is it one side of Limerick's game that like when things aren't going aren't going well for them in games as it was against Cork in those opening 25 minutes that they don't seem like a side that are ever willing to panic anymore maybe in 2019 you could say against Kilkenny that they, they possibly did panic a little but you know certainly over the last year or 18 months it, or two years even since that 2019 semi-final when things haven't been going right for them in games they just they seem to have just plugged along and ploughed their way through it and eventually got to to where they needed to be yeah, and you're right. It is amazing that they keep calling her out. And you know, she was with Tyrone, she was with Tip, she's with Dublin footballers. And um, so she come, she must be amazing. I'd love to uh, be in some of the meetings that she has with the players. And I know that um, you know, Gareth Hegarty and his man the match uh, um, performance last year. You know, he described it as an outer body experience and just how he was so in the zone. And I think that's what Caroline Curd in particular brings to the, the the team. In addition to obviously Kylie and Knurk, is that they're so in the zone. Um, and that they're so focused and so comp- composed and whether it's a sin binning that you know that is thrown at them or whether you know they court through the you know the 25 minutes they Limerick were behind they're always able to um you know and even in the all-around final in 2017 um against uh you know Galway they're they're always or 2018 they're always able to stay composed keep the scoreboard um, taken over um, and, and grind it out. Um, and also in addition to that, you know, mentally, you know, the finishers who are there to come on are as equally tuned in. You know, you'll have the likes of um, Graham McCahey or um, Parine that would be able to come on if needs be this weekend um, and, and finish it for them. So it's not just the 15, it's very much seems to be a unit um, and, a, and a culture that they have similar to, I guess, what Kilkenny are traditionally known for down through, through the years. And Caroline Curd is, is you know a major uh, you know person who has had an impact on that yeah and like you mentioned the the strength and depth they have like a uh, they've a fit again Richie English back in the full back line this season and that has meant that Dan Morrissey of all people is being pushed out onto the subs bench now we don't know is he going to be starting or on the bench this weekend but against Cork he started off on the bench and came on during the match as well like to have that level of a player and that level of a just a physical presence and an athlete as well to be able to introduce yeah. into the second half of a game is is incredible. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think you know, that's one of the things that is tipping Limerick as the number one team in the country at the moment is the strength and depth of their panel. If you if you look at like Clare and, and Wexford who are playing, you know, later in the, you know, are playing the weekend as well, like Wexford, when they went to extra time against Kilkenny uh, in the Leinster semi-final, they had to re-bring on uh, their players, um, Nemo Overgover and Dermot O'Keefe, which is hard. You know, it's very hard for players who are actually give it everything and then extra time they're asked to come on again. Whereas Limerick have fresh pair of legs and, and, and they've all stars. They've really, really talented players on the bench, which, you know, as I said, gives them the extra edge over and makes them the favourites and I guess the reason um, that they've been so successful down through the years 
so for Tipperary then they were beaten by Limerick by nine points when the teams met in the Munster final last year or in the Munster Championship last year is there much to suggest that they've closed the gap in that time? Uh, well, with Tip, there isn't too much um, new blood, you could say, on the team, with the exception, I guess, of, of Jake Morris has really come to the fore. They're still very much reliant on um, their old reliables, the Matters, um, Jason Ford, Bubbles Dwyer, um, you know, Shami Callan. Um, but to be fair, like, you know, there's talk that Chidi is so loyal to them and, 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 and that down through the years, but they produce the goods. Um, and, you know, I'm sure viewers who were watching the um, semi final. Um, two weeks ago will have noticed how lean and mean you know the Tipperary players looked especially Bubbles O'Dwyer is, is in the shape of his life Shamie Cannon um, was you know was also looking very fit so um, you know I think there's one big game left in, 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 in this Tipperary team and you know they didn't win the Munster final um, two years ago um, and then went on to win the All-Ireland um, but they'll be going they'll want to win this match so they'll be going hell for leather um, and it's going to be really interesting to see the matchups like who picks up Keen Lynch, who picks up Shamie Callan, um, you know, or is Port is Port Maher in the full back line? Is he going to have the legs for say Aaron Gillan? Um, I know Brendan Maher marked Aaron Gillan um a couple of years ago. Is he, is that going to happen again? Um, so the matchups, um, they're both really shrewd people, and and Eamon O'Shea in the Tipperary background team is every bit as creative and as intelligent as as Paul Knurk um, and Kylie doing you know doing the matchups. So it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, who 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 marks who and and who nullifies who? Well, on those matchups, then, like if we're uh, if you were to take what you think are going to be the prospective teams on Sunday, what what players are going on? What Limerick players to give Tipperary a chance of of winning this Sunday? So I think um, Cahill Barrett, who is one of the best cornerbacks in, in the game, uh, you know very close to Sean Finn will go on Peter Casey um, I think the Tipperary are going to have to really think about Garrett Hegarty because he's such an engine for Limerick and when he's going well Limerick are going well um, so they might put um, you know a strong tall man on him like Barry Heffernan who plays out the field um, for his club Nina um, and is well able to take his his scores who's going to go on Keane Lynch you know he's such a I think he clocks up the most kilometres of the all the Limerick team in midfield 16 or 17 17 kilometers a day um, every time he goes out. So who's going to be picking him up? Will it be Dan McCormack to you know, or will it be Brendan Maher to do a man marking job on him? Um, probably Dan McCormack, I would say. I think Brendan is, is um, might sit back in wing back a little bit more. Um, and also then Jason Ford is Jason Ford going to go on? Um, you know, is he going to where is he going to be positioned? Is Shamie Callan going to come out uh, centre forward? Um, it's it's uh, it's going to be interesting. But as I said, I think the Peter Casey will go on um, or Carl Barrett will mark Peter Casey um, and then the half back line of uh, will have to be for Limerick um, and the half forward line will definitely have to be nullified if Tipperary are going to be in with a chance but I think Keane Lynch is such a pivotal player for Limerick as well it's going to be very interesting to see who goes on him I think it'll probably be Dan McCormack myself uh, Looking back at Tipperary's game against Clare I saw a good stat during the week. Two fifteen out of Tipperary's three twenty three came directly from turnovers. Is that is that their main threat? Uh, winning ball against Limerick and countering, or is it is it a bit different? Are Limerick going to be using the ball a little a little bit better than than Clare were a couple of weeks back? Yeah, so I think Tipperary are, are you know this year the uh, one of the biggest things that you'll notice from kind of previous years is their distribution of the ball. And um, so from their full back line and half back line, they're not as belting the ball down the field as much as they used to be. And um, they're more moving it up the lines, kind of more Limerick esque. So I suspect that we will see more of that because you know the, as you said, it's all about um, primary possession. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how how that goes. But um, you know, it's it's it, 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 a lot of it comes down to the puckouts. Then you know, is it are they going to go long puckouts against the you know Tipper like Limerick are very very tall um, and they they have very very strong area possession. The likes of um, you know Kyle Hayes, Declan Hannon. Um, do you know so are are they going to go short puck outs and um move it up the lines so it's going to be i think it's going to come down to primary possession and in particular the puck outs um and very much so again with nicky quaid like what's he going to do are they going to do short puck outs which traditionally they do and then move it up the lines 
Um, so, yeah, it's going to be, I guess, possession is king and whoever has the most possession, whoever keeps the cool the most is, is going to win this game. And if Limerick are pucking the ball out short, as you said you expect they probably will be, is it a case for Tipperary that they're pushing up on that or are they letting Limerick win that initial first ball and trying to turn it over further out the pitch and dropping the men back? I think they will push up. Um, I think they're going to have to be so dogged and so ferocious um, and they're going to, their work rate is going to have to be unbelievable. So I think if you even let Limerick get a sniff of the, of the ball, it's very hard to take it off them because of that. what we mentioned earlier is that they are so composed uh, mentally and you know all of their, their training, I know it's gone that way now, uh, um, but even like more so with Limerick, it seems Paul Knurk, it's all game based it's all um, balls balls and like position position and like winning the the ball so they're very very composed so yeah Tipperary are going to have to really press up and I suspect that if they go short that um, you know Shamie Callan and um, you know Jake Morris Jason Ford are going to have to be are going to be primed to work like dogs to try and um, you know dispossess them and turn over the ball I'll wait till we finish up fully before I get uh, I'll get all your predictions together for the weekend but we'll move on to the Leinster Hurling final that's tomorrow evening half past seven throw in at Croke Park and 18,000 fans hopefully going to be at it as well uh, which is going to be fantastic to see at Croke Park yeah. Dublin against Kilkenny Dublin I think shocked us all against Galway a few weeks back uh, I'm not sure anyone really saw that coming are they capable of producing that back to back though? Uh, um, it's going to be very difficult because Kilkenny are just Kilkenny and Leinster finals and they have just this amazing ability to slog it out um, and win the games um, and you're you're spot on Dublin were deserved winners against Galway they didn't let Galway hurl you know they were they were they led from the word go uh, and they were really impressive uh, in particular like Danny Sutcliffe and Burke and their half forward line and um, Crummy um, so it is going to be uh, an interesting battle and um, there's a big question mark over Owen O'Donnell and mm. um, the Dublin full back he is arguably you know one of the best fullbacks in the country he's double, one of Dublin's best players so if he is out um, I, that's going to be a huge blow to is that, is that a complete game changer if he isn't able to play yes yes it is a complete game changer because he would be you know he's just experienced he is he commands the the the, the position he's brilliant um you know on the high ball um and it is a massive blow um but in saying that like Maddie Kenny for Dublin is you know he's a real hurling man he's back to back all Ireland's with Kula you know he's uh, you know he'll really really want this game and and Dublin you know due to the bereavements that they've had unfortunately you know sometimes that can you know in this year the last couple of weeks sometimes that can give you you know an extra cause or uh, an extra reason to play with the edge and um, because you have a, you know this extra piece of motivation behind you so um I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a tight game um but it's very hard to, to look past Kilkenny um especially with you know TJ Reed on form and especially also with their subs um, or their finishers as, 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 as they're called you know that Walter Walsh came on the last day against Wexford and scored 1-1 one, one. Um, you know Bergen came on and scored a point you know so they have a strong uh, subs bench that I think will um, push them over the end, edge but yeah it's, it's, it's going to be hard to see Dublin uh, push another performance back to back especially because Dublin are brilliant when they're the underdogs um, they are still the underdogs in this game but you know they had such an impressive performance over Galway that some people are saying geez you know Dublin could rattle take any um, and you know I don't think that works in Dublin's favour to be honest when they're anyway uh, not the underdog yeah and like as I think a lot of people pointed out as well that the physicality of Dublin against Galway like Galway just really couldn't kind of get to grips with the game on a physical level that always seems to be exactly like Kilkenny just seemed to love it when you want to bring the, the game physically to them like they're just going to be sitting there waiting for that to happen it seems yeah and like Brian Cody you know he's just a genius of a man and he's just one of the GA's amazing managers and you know he it, they're, it's just like a conveyor belt down there like you think um, Henry Shefflin Eddie Brennan those lads gone then you think Colin Fenley gone this year um, you know but year in year out they're able to just turn out the players like you know and Cody this year um, is going well Adrian Mullen another um, young hurler of the year uh, TJ Reid still flying at Porrick Walsh centre back amazing family 
family that they have managed to have like Tommy uh, all star year after year now Porrick centre back you know Lord and, and their sister Grace Walsh you know for her Lord Camogie player of the year last year and, and you know one of Kilkenny's great Camogie players so you know it's just uh, yeah as you said they just you know they 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 they've just got this culture, this spirit, this never die attitude that you can never write them off. They're all Ireland contenders every single year. You know we saw that uh, 2019 when they bet you know Limerick in the All Ireland semi final. You know they were mass, they were underdogs. You know and they've lost a they'd lost a good few players. You know they were a team in transition, Maria, but yet they still came out and you know uh, bet Limerick in, in the semi final. So. Yeah, you you can you can bring the physicality, you can bring all the tactics, you can bring the spirit against Kikenny, but um, more often than not, um, they just love that, as you said, and and they uh, grind out the win. They're just so dogged in their in their intentions to to win the game. Yeah, elsewhere tomorrow, then no silverware on the line. But bizarrely, I feel like I've actually heard more about Clare against Wexford this week than I have of either of the two provincial finals, which I think it just says so much about. The Davy and Brian Lowen rivalry. It says so yeah. much about the the bizarre COVID close contact situation that they had back in the league yes. as well. There is a, a phenomenal subplot running through this Clare and Wexford game, even aside from the fact that whoever loses is done for the season. Yeah, like the drama is just unbelievable, and it's got it makes for a more exciting um, game. And I, I guess you could argue that there's two matches going on uh, within this one game. You have like the the Brian Lowe and Davy Fitz match, and then you have the match uh, on the field. But yeah, it's been well documented that the two sides don't get on from years back when they were involved with LIT and uh, Brian with UL, um, and as you mentioned, the COVID um, uh, element, and then. You know, the Wexford County Board asking Brian Lowen to come out and apologise and no close contacts in the Wexford team and two and Clare. And, um, you know, there's just no love lost between these two teams. Uh, I think Clare are going to feel really, you know, they're going to use that as ammunition. They're going to use the Aidan McCarthy um, sin bin and the penalty that was awarded. That was, you know, very well documented. And, you know, a lot of people thought that it shouldn't have been a penalty. It's, yes, it's inside the 21 yard, but it was way out. Uh, the corner side you know, side and, you know, there was loads of defenders uh, behind the ball. So I think they're going to feel aggrieved and they're going to come in with a massive chip on their shoulder, um, which will make for nail-biting stuff. And like f- from the Wexford side of things, then like the last eight times that these teams have met, like Clare have won six times in championships. So Davy is not going to want to, you know, let that slide. and He'll want to, you know, win this game and um, prove a point as well. So Wexford are, you know, they came off a remarkable game against Kilkenny and they lost by eight points in the end, but that didn't, um, you know, that wasn't a reflection of the game. Uh, they were they should have won in, in normal time, um, but again just extra time that the subs and the legs kind of seemed to go against them and, and Kilkenny uh, you know drove on, but it's going to be in, like out of all the games this weekend I think this is the hardest one to call because they're so close, um, so it's going to be really really interesting to see who wins the the Clare and Wexford game. It's it's you know it's kind of do or die at this stage, so um, it's going to be um, helter skelter as they say. Yeah, like I mean, as we said, there's no silverware on the line, but there's so much jeopardy uh, on the line that really just adds to it. And it feels like it has the potential to be a defining game for for both managers, uh, whoever wins and whoever loses. If, if, for example, if Clare were to win and Wexford were to finish up, it's five years now Davy has been in charge at Wexford. Could you see could you see Davy moving on if if they were dumped out of the championship this weekend? Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I think, uh, as you say, Davy's strong point is kind of coming in and getting young players and getting them to buy into what he is um, doing and, you know, them all steering behind him. And then as the years go by, it's harder and harder to do that. So, yeah, five year stint is a long time. Um, they had, a, you know, they won a, a Leinster title. They've had some success, you know, uh, should have beaten Tipperary in the All Ireland semi final there a few years back definitely should have beaten them um, and then they lost form massively last year um, and this year they seem to be coming good again so I think this is like one you know big year for Wexford big year for Davy Fitz but yeah as I as you said I think it is his last year and, and it's interesting that you you talk about the two managers because they're polar you know they're polar sides apart like mm. you know Davy is so animated and you know uh, is so vocal and you know Brian is just so 
kind of um, not as animated and doesn't give much away in his post-match interviews, give a little bit more away after the Tipperary game because you could see his, his frustration, um, but he's quite direct and you wouldn't see, you know, you don't see too much tactic boards or, uh, you know, the water breaks when Clare are playing. It's, it's, it's a kind of more, it seems to be more of a direct approach and a more a hurling kind of approach as opposed to whereas Wexford would be quite tactical, you know, they, with their um, sweeper down to the years, etc. So um, it's going to be really interesting. It's going to be who's going to pick up Tony Kelly, who's going to nullify him, who's going to pick up Lee Shin. They, I think, think they're the two men to watch. Um, there's so much talk about Tony Kelly, but yes, um, against Kikenny, you know, they had so many more other scorers, you know, um, so they're not just purely relying on him. They have the Galvins, uh, Reedy, Aaron Shannon, a lot is going to come down to that who marks him and if his shooting boots are on I think Clare then will have um, a great chance um, and similarly with Wexford um, you know I think if it if it comes down to extra time I think Wexford will be in trouble um, and if it's very tight at the end of the you know from the final water break to the end I think Wexford could be in trouble as well because they just don't seem to have the strength and the depth in the panel um, to kind of close out a game yeah, I sense you're leaning towards Clare. I'll get the final word in a in a, in a moment, though. Oh, the the other qualifier tomorrow afternoon, Leash against Waterford. Leash had a good win against Antrim last time out, but does it feel like maybe their their road is going to end this weekend? Yeah, it does to me anyway. Um, and you know they've they've retained their uh, Division One status for next year. Um, you know, Waterford, I think, are coming off a very poor performance uh, versus Tip. Um, yes, they were riddled with injuries from Prunty and Barron and Ty de Borca. Um, they may give those players uh, another week's rest um, against Leash and, and then bring them out um, for the following game. But yeah, it's hard to see um, Leash beating Waterford. And I think Waterford have to be like Scolded Cats because they're just flopped, really. Uh, to put it bluntly against um, Tip, so they, I imagine, um, Cahill will have them, you know, you know, very much honed for this game as a kind of a, a warmer teaser for um, the next round of qualifiers for them. All right. So the quick predictions straight away on that one: Leash against Waterford. I'm sensing you're going Waterford, are you? Yeah, I'm going Waterford. Yeah. The other qualifier then: half past one, Clare against Wexford, Semple Stadium. Who's going to stay in the championship? Yeah, that's a really, really tough one. Um, I'd say I will just edge towards um, Claire um, just for the points that I mentioned, just for um, mentally, I think they will um, grind it out. So that's Waterford and Claire going through to the next round of the championship. The provincial titles, who's going to win in Leinster, Dublin or Kilkenny? Kilkenny. And then... Monster hurling Limerick. championship final. Yeah, you could you couldn't yeah. you could you couldn't walk around a day or after St. Tipperary, could you? Well, you know, I'm from Galway and uh, <laughs> Galway's number one. <laughs> so I always fly that flag uh, very much so. But uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm in Limerick now for years, so um it's, I love it down here as well. But uh, yeah, Galway won and then and Limerick are my are my second team. And also shout out to the Camogies um championship who are uh, kicking off this weekend as well. You have um, Kikenny All Ireland champions taking on Clare, and you have Galway, who lost the All Ireland final last year, taking on Westmead. And the junior and intermediates are kicking off as well this weekend. So um, both games are being live streamed. Um, so it should um, also be cracking weekend of matches on the Camogie side of things. Ashton Connolly, thanks a million for joining us. Thanks, Neil. Take care.